Hello there people, so here I am back at the small holding I've shown you people before. So it's the 21st of July 2019 and quite a lot of things are going on here. It's actually very exciting from a gardener's point of view. The flowers look beautiful, the vegetables are coming on and there's some amazingly sort of cared for tomatoes here in this greenhouse. So I thought I'd show you just how good they indeed are. So here we go. So look at those. There's quite a few tomatoes actually, tomato plants and all along there look so very carefully and lovingly looked after I mean look and they just look beautiful there's some there we'll have a closer look at some in a moment but um, I'm just gonna bring the older uh, camera back here so you see these this, this uh, greenhouse has got a lot of tomato plants in it and the way they are being grown is up these strings here so there's like a frame that's being built um, you know, quite nicely built, nailed or screwed together. And this, of course, can be used from year to year if it's been built properly. So very nice indeed. Now, I'm not totally aware of what these varieties of tomato are, but you can see they're being grown in pots here, and they're in these trays of water, which is a very good way of keeping the water you know around the plant so it can have water whenever it wants particularly something like tomatoes because when tomatoes are ripening if you suddenly give them loads of water that's what can cause the fruit to split whereas if they can sort of gently take up the water as and when they please that's far less likely to happen so very nice indeed and I imagine these have been pinched out, or indeed most of them have. I mean, these bits need to be taken off, but that's not the, certainly not uh, any big deal, is it? But, um, so, got a nice little cluster of fruit set there, and some flowers coming here as well. So that's all looking particularly nice, in my opinion. And let's have a look at these ones. So these are looking pretty good as well. Nice little bunch all ready to come there growing nicely supported and tied in. I like this one, this one here, look. So it's tied down here. Whoops, you can see how that's tied like that. And it's wrapped around the stem of the tomato plant and tied to the top. And that then gives it something to climb up. So nice, nice ornamental looking little tomato there, isn't it? So yeah, it's all looking very nice indeed. So I would imagine there's gonna be a very nice crop of tomatoes here within the next few months so looking very beautiful indeed it's all these roses I just couldn't help myself I mean look how lovely look at that lovely pink I mean, look gorgeous I mean look at it and look at that just looks lovely doesn't it and uh, you know, a bit of deadheading you know to deadhead you would just take it off so this is your you know your one that needs deadheading just just take it back to a leaf about there with secateurs or flick it off with your nail whatever and then hopefully that should come again so lovely if it's a variety that uh, you know comes again with flowers anyway it looks lovely something about looking out onto a field isn't there just think how many people that the uh, resulting produce from this is going to feed. An amazing concept if one thinks about it. Yeah, here you go, you've seen it before, but uh, you're getting ready for some amazing grapes. Um, there you go, so <clears throat> I'm going to say it again, but um, if you type in growing grapes in the UK, you'll see a video that I put up about um, grapes growing in the UK unsurprisingly uh, a few years ago I think it should come up close to the top of the list if you search for it um, on YouTube and that vine is what the cuttings for these vines here came from so these have all been grown from cuttings from that vine so looking absolutely fantastic there um, again from some other cuttings Lakemont seedless down there so you know propagating grapes from cuttings very very possible indeed and I mean if you think of the total cost really of you know, negligible compared to the you know massive you know grape crop that this is indeed carrying they're all behind these uh, sort of leaves here and the uh, the owner of this vine will uh, proceed to remove some of these leaves later in the season to allow the grapes to sort of sweeten up increase their sugar content by the sun hitting them a bit harder so lovely little collection 
well, I say little, lovely, huge collection of grapes all waiting to come. Fantastic. And all along the border here, look, we've got some sort of courgette down there, more here. Yeah, loads of courgette plants here. I mean, this is like, oh, look at these, the yellow, yellow courgettes. They're lovely. Um, more under there as well. Obviously, they're nowhere near ready to harvest yet. They need to get bigger. But these are a great thing to grow because you get massive crops in a small space. Great variety. I'm going to be growing some of these next year. Blackberries here, look, all looking gorgeous. Should we try this one? Yes, yeah, ready, isn't it? Cool. Nice. Down there as well. This was a red currant, or is a red currant indeed, but it's finished now, all been picked. Gooseberries. These gooseberries look, are looking gorgeous and cool. Look at those, absolutely. Low. They're quite small actually this year. Um, haven't had massive amounts of rain. Did have some rain yesterday. Um, we could really do with a bit more rain, to be honest. But um, I'm sure the owner won't mind me uh, helping myself to some good gogs. Here, um, Jostaberry. Now, I'm going to be taking some cuttings of this. So this one here, look. This, from where my finger is, you can see, is this year's growth. Okay, so in the dormant season, I'll probably remove a bit like this and take take it, take a cutting. And the way you do it is you remove a piece of the last growing season's growth and you take off about four buds. You put two in the ground or in a pot of compost and leave two above, keep it moist throughout the year and it should root. Very similar to um, how you take cuttings, you know, from grapes really. But an uh, intriguing taste actually, Jostaberries. They're cross between a gooseberry in a black currant, I believe. And unsurprisingly, the taste is indeed somewhere between those. I've got more down here again, more down here again, and you've got a lovely fuchsia here. And in many ways, it can be very nice if you can get um, flowers, especially something like a fuchsia, which flowers you know, for a long time, and there are numerous flowers, you know, to help attract bees to your vegetable patches, fruit patches. And I just think it's really nice, you know, a bit of both. Um, from the bees aspect, the pollination, and also from the aspect of beauty as well, because it's very important, I think, that we generate beauty when we, uh, when we garden, if indeed we can. I mean, you know, you've seen a lot of my own sort of premises, and it's not as um, beautiful as this, but, um, you know, I'm slowly working towards it, and generating beauty is certainly one thing that I would like to get a little bit more into, but things come in time. Nice little rose there. So talking about generating beauty, look at this absolutely lovely pink, purple, red as pink, isn't it really? Hydrangea. I mean, doesn't it look lovely? I mean, look at just look at the look at the lovely colour of it. Fantastic, isn't it? I've got a real thing about hydrangeas. Many of you uh, do indeed know this, but this this really is lovely one. Look at the lovely. Um, colour of the leaves there, lovely green, absolutely beautiful, well nourished, well cared for, just a very, very lovely looking hydrangea and I'm very um, sort of enthusiastic about this one. Um, I would like to extend my collection of hydrangeas myself but once again, oh, they've got flowers here, we're waiting to come look. Um, yeah, it's lovely isn't it? And as we look over there, the sun is starting to go down now, so uh, hope the quality of the video is still good. Just think how much produce is there. Okay, so as we walk to the vegetable patch, um, loads going on here, tomatoes being grown, um, similar way to the, in the um, greenhouse you saw moments ago, um, up the strings there. And we've got some lettuce as well. Looks like coriander here, I think. Please um, correct me if I'm wrong in those regards. Carrots there. And this beetroot is epic. I mean, look at that. I mean, just I'm just going to show you this. Look, you've got to see this view. Look at that. Look, that lovely view there. Look from the vegetable patch. I'm just going to see if I can turn the light up on this. Does that help a little bit? 
because it is indeed starting to get dark. There you go. So all the way along there, look. It's lovely, isn't it? Now these runner beans, actually, um, the runner beans you're well acquainted for that I'm growing myself, variety best of all, which I purchased from, um, where is it? Pound stretcher. Um, yeah, pound stretcher. These are actually them as well. I grew these and they've been planted here. So that looks absolutely lovely, doesn't it? And uh, onions, garlic, blah de blahs. Loads going on there. Got the golden delicious apple tree, laden with fruit. Often suffers from scab here in the UK. Um, golden delicious, because it does favour sort of warmer warmer climates you know like very famously grown in south of france south africa places like that but you can indeed grow um golden delicious here if you wish okay hope that's not coming out too bright um but here this is variety discovery and a lot of these are actually ready now now discovery is one of the first apples to be ready of the season um not the first i don't think I think I remember hearing a variety called Irish, Irish peach is the first, I think. But, you know, if you ask most people what comes first, many will say discovery. And, you know, eating apples in mid-July, certainly not bad going, is it? What else we got? We've got another variety here. I'm not sure what this is. This could maybe be James Grieve or something. But I don't know. We've got radishes down here. And here we've got um, dwarf beans. Now, somebody asked me about crops that you can set this time of year. You can still grow dwarf beans bush varieties like these from seed and get a crop at this time of year. The reason is because they come into cropping quickly, okay? So, you know, as soon as you can, if, you, if that floats your boat, get some dwarf beans on the go. And another apple tree here. We've got some, got a plum tree here. Whoops, I've just knocked one on the floor. Not sure what variety this is, but you can see all the plums on there, look. All looking pretty nice. Not ready yet, still very, very hard. And another apple tree here. And the strawberries here have indeed finished. Here we've got some potatoes in some pots. Quite a large pot, this one. Can't see where they're flowering yet, but they will do. Shouldn't be too long. Now this cherry tree, I think it's grew wild. It's got like a load of small little cherries. The birds got them all this year, but a very beautiful tree. These are lovely flowers, aren't they? Yeah, I've got some sunflowers. I have a very old Bramley apple tree, laden with fruit. Okay, people, so that's it. Uh, we've got some bullish plums. Ooh, really starting to go dark now, isn't it? See the uh, sun going down over there, look. There's a lot of these sort of... Uh, they're probably poplar trees, or as they say in the US, poplar. Um, they used to use them a lot for, you know, for wind breaks. You know, like those over there. Take care, people, if you like my work. Bullish plums up there. If you like my work, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Any comments, questions, or what's it, please post them down below. See you next time.